Breaching Social Media Norms Using Facebook. For this experiment, I chose the Facebook Picture Creeper. I chose an old high school classmate to comment on a significant amount of photos of her older than six months. The old high school classmate or subject A and I have not spoken to each other in a while. It's important to choose someone you have not interacted with in a while and, you, and who might not get offended even if you were to explain the experiment afterwards. The goal after commenting on at least 30 of subject A's pictures was to see her reaction. My prediction was subject A would be either just weirded out and not say anything or think my Facebook had been hacked into. The experiment took place over three days, and over those three days I commented on 30 photos. I went backwards into Subject A's tagged photos because the older the picture is the more random. I screenshotted every photo I commented on. I checked Facebook numerous times over the three days to see if notifications included that somebody else commented on the photos. I also screenshotted any texts I received about the picture comments. I made sure the comments were positive and could not in any way be taken negatively. I also made sure not to tell anyone to get so I can get reactions from other friends since the pictures comments may pop up in their news feeds, and also to ensure that no one tells the person about the experiment. On the first day of the photo comments, I made comments such as, cute photo, cowgirl, or mmm, that sandwich looks good. About a minute into making these photo comments, I received a forwarded text from a mutual friend between me and subject A. The text read, Rose Dugan just commented on a ton of pics from my, my albums in high school, dot dot dot. So subject A, with about a minute into the experiment, had already noticed this high increase of photo comments and was already a little sketched out by what was going on. On day two, the comments continue with, pretty girls or adorable, Day three, I concluded my last day of photo comments with cool shades and looking real classy. As a result, I only received one text about the odd photo comments. Nobody else commented on the same photos, and nobody commented on the increase of photos of subject A in their newsfeed. Because I didn't get such a strong reaction, I decided to ask subject A about it after the experiment was completed. Subject A's response was, well, after the first one or two in, I was like, oh, hi, Rose, thinking like, oh, like, hey, what's up? Long time no see. Then after several more on the high school albums of mine, I thought, hmm, is this a joke or most likely a hacker? I was going to message you, but then I just let it rock. At first, one, two, or maybe three comments may seem normal or friendly. Hey, we haven't talked in a while. But there were three factors that made me a Facebook creeper. One, old photos. Two, number of comments. And three, time frame. Old photos. Commenting on old photos of an acquaintance you haven't spoken to in a while can only mean you are stalking their photos and stalking a lot of them to get the old photos. Commenting on a, few, on a new photo is less creepy because it is possible the photo just popped up in your newsfeed and you liked the picture. Number of photos. Commenting on a few old photos could be acceptable because maybe the person thought you were reminiscing on, on old high school photos. But commenting on 30 photos is just an excessive amount and will make the person feel uncomfortable. It's also annoying because with a high number of comments means that it's more likely those photos will pop up in other people's news feeds. Time frame. One day of commenting on a lot of old photos is weird enough, but over a three day period is over the top. Three, day, three days means that there was a significant amount of effort put into this. I think a big part of Facebook is that activities are supposed to be or at least appear effortless and easy, considering now that people can access Facebook from their phones. And in a scholarly article written by Econ Veer titled, Staring, How Facebook Facilitates the Breaking of Social Norms, Veer discusses how Facebook breaks the social norm by allowing people to stare. Facebook acts as a facilitator for breaking with normal social interactions whereby the users can watch, stare, and even seek out private information about others completely anonymously. He also argues that the appeal of staring behavior can be used to improve the appeal of future social media-based relationships. We've been taught at a young age that it's not polite to stare. 
But as a communication technology, Facebook has created a new social norm that allows people to stare, but anonymously. It's okay to go search or stare at 30 of people's photos, but as long as the other person doesn't know. It's okay to comment on a few photos because that too is an accepted new norm. This experiment was a violation of the new norm because I made it known that I was staring and stalking at a tremendous amount of photos. Overall, overall I was successful in being a Facebook picture creeper and violating this new social norm. Maybe with a different person or even a higher volume of picture comments, I could have received more of a reaction. My biggest fear going into the experiment was not embarrassing myself, but having the other person think that I was making fun of them. Even though I made sure that the comments were nice and positive, I did not want this person to take it as a cruel joke, but luckily Subject A was not offended.